This is a loaded year. I mean, loaded. These are the two words that the, the, the first revelation that God has started sharing with me was that this was a time of greater grace. I've been saying it, but I haven't really shared the revelation on that. Greater grace. Now we've heard of greater glory. The Bible says we go from glory to glory, faith to faith, right? But God said, no, no, greater grace. Grace is a pillar, a pillar of God. I just shared that on our last, on our last video within our paintings, that a pillar, a pillar, the foundation, grace is a pillar of God. It's who he is. It's unchangeable. It's immovable. It'll never, it'll never be able to be anything different. Grace is, is, is a major characteristic of who God is and how he has designed everything to work by grace. But we're entering into an interval of time called greater Grace. I had received this revelation while I was worshiping and painting. And while the music was on, I started singing from just, just from just freestyle. And here are the words that I started singing. The greater grace to run the race, to face. The greater grace of time and space, to fill a place. The great escape where all things fall into place. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that again. The greater grace to run the race, to face, meaning to face whatever it is. The grace to run the race, to face the grace of time and space, to fill a place. The great escape where all things fall into place. Did y'all catch that? I hope y'all caught that. He said, there is a grace that is called a greater grace. This is a measure of my grace that is in time and space. Now, when I say time and space, I mean, literally. Like, you understand that it's a grace to live the crossover of December the 31st to January the 1st, two th do you understand that that's a space of grace? Like, you literally crossed over into another interval of time, of existence. But it's a grace and it's a space. Does that make sense? It's, it's a grace, but it's also a space. It's a window of time that only comes once every year. Right? The new year comes once every year. That's a space. That's a time of space. He said, this is a measure of grace in time and space. A greater grace will call, a, it's a greater grace that we're about to experience that will cause our enemies to experience a backward movement. Now, what does that mean? Remember when I talked about the weight of God being so heavy that everything else will adhere to it? Well, this is a greater grace, the grace of God, a new measure of God that's going to put a weight over our lives, like a barrier that's going to cause everything else to move backward. You got to stay with me because this is, it's almost, you got to have a scientific mind to, to think about this because when you think about like a space shuttle or a spaceship, the only way it goes forward is because something goes backwards. Right. You understand what I'm saying? When the combustion goes out, it's, it's something is going back and that's how it goes up. This is what, this is what greater grace looks like. A grace that causes contrary things to recede and digress. This is why I said it's like divine intervention. Because it's some things we, that we just may not have the power to remove from our lives. But there's a greater grace. I know if you're, if you're under the sound of my voice, this is God's message to you on tonight. That there is a grace that is going to cause some contrary things to recede and digress in your life that's happening to you or around you. That when you step into this divine timing, remember I said grace is time and space. 
when you step into this divine timing, it is the providence of God. Providence is about what? Land, space, authority. It's the providence of time. It is a crossing over in time into a space called greater grace. Now, if you, you may not have, get, it, get it right now, but when you, you got to watch this over, you'll get it. But this is the revelation of greater grace. It's a crossing over in time. Grace, let me give you an example. Grace changed when the covenants changed. This, for, this is for my Bible scholars. Moses introduced the law. That was one level of grace. But when Jesus died, on the cross, everybody who was still alive that next day was given a greater measure of grace the very next day. That said, the law, you could never meet the law. You don't, you don't, you don't have enough perfection in you to follow everything that the law entails. So I have given you now a greater grace that blood was shed for your sin it paid the ransom and so now you can you can take that grace and walk in a greater measure of grace this is what god is saying tonight like like oh my mom i like i hope i hope y'all can understand what i'm saying it's a crossing over in time so just imagine every person that had to walk perfectly by the law when jesus came on the scene died that that's that changed the game this is a game, game changing season right here. Trust me when I tell you, if you could believe by faith, this is a game changing season. It's a crossing over in time. The word says, any man be in Christ, Jesus, he is a what? A new creation. That's a crossing over. The moment you accept, the moment, that's time. That's time. That's time. You can, you can have lived like a raggedy, Godly Hollywood. The moment you accepted Christ in your heart, it could have been October the 1st. October the 1st, you said, I accept Christ in my heart. I believe he died from my October the 2nd. You were a new creation. Greater grace. A space and time. See, some things sound real deep, but it'd be a real easy understanding when you really look at it. This is the space of greater grace. I said, God, I get it, but I, I, I need to be able to explain this a little bit more to, to, to people. I know what you mean, but I want them to really get this for this year because you can really walk this year out like every other year. And God has prepared a table for you that you don't even eat off because you got enemies. But his words said, I prepared before you and the, a table and the presence of your enemies. And when you know what you have, if you know God is really, if you know you're walking in a space of greater grace, it's just, it's just different. <laughs> it's just different. So God showed me, God shows me visions. He gives me numbers. He gives me colors. Like he gives me, he, 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 he speaks to me creatively. And so I literally saw an eight and then an eight flash in the spirit. And I knew that that was God speaking. And when I looked up the biblical meaning for the number 88, now I'm going to, I'm going to be talking about numbers because this is how God revealed it. I, this is all biblical. There's scripture to go with it. This is not me just using mystical numbers. This is God speaking. God showed me number 88 in the spirit. And I looked up the Strong's Greek meaning. You know, we look, we, we, can, we can hear it through Hebrew or we can hear it through Greek for those of you who study in the word. That number means incessant. Incessant. I-N-C-E-S-S-A-N-T. Want to know what that means? No unnecessary gaps in space or time. When something is incessant, that means there are no gaps in space and time. 
This was God confirming the greater grace. You understand what I'm saying? Meaning there's no gaps. There's no imperfection in what he's getting ready to do. In, in the space and time of greater grace, there is no gaps. There's no room for mistake. When God is, or, when God is truly ordained, this is what it means when it's like ordained, it's set in stone, it's incessant, meaning it's irrevocable. There's some things this year, this season, let me not just limit it to this year, but in this new, this new era, this new season that are going to be undeniable in our lives. This is the voice of God. This is what he is saying. No unnecessary gaps in space or time without, and here's another definition, without unjustifiable intervals, meaning it's unceasing and it's unremitted. Now, what does it mean when something is unceasing? This is eternal. Eter we have present time. We have eternal time. Eternal time is where God is, meaning it has been spoken from the beginning to the end. This is what incessant means. This is what the number 88 represents. And when you begin to study that, you understand it's connected to so much more heavenly. There are 88 keys on the piano. The piano was designed with 88 keys, and that's not a coincidence. This is about the sound. Remember, sound. Everything in life is about sound. When God spoke, you, 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 you following me? Num the number 888 is the manifestation of God. When you look it up biblically, this, is a, this, this also can be seen in the power of Elijah. Elijah did three sets of eight miracles. These are things that you can take back in prayer and you can also research. Elijah did three sets of eight miracles, 888. Eight, eight. This is the confirmation of what I'm saying is what I'm giving you, the affirmation and the confirmation. Now, I said, God, now I have some people who will be hearing this, that's like, oh, I'm not into the numbers. So I said, can you give me something else? So God said, well, take, take them to, to Noah. <laughs> take them to Noah. Top it off with Noah. First and foremost, after God created for seven days, he rested, right? And then the eighth day was what? A new beginning. So the number eight is about new beginnings. Now that's, we, we, we all know that one. <laughs> number eight is about new beginnings. Everything in the Bible, when it speaks about eight, is normally sh God showing new beginnings. When you go to Genesis chapter eight, and you can write this down and you can research this. Genesis chapter eight is the chapter when God commissioned Noah to build the ark and when God destroyed the earth. Here's, here's what's going to bring it home. The ark was a space of greater grace. What did, when God commissioned Noah, when God said, I'm going to destroy the earth, everybody but you and your family, that's grace. That was the first time that God was giving us a like a, well not the first time but God maybe giving us a real clear picture of what grace looked like that I'm going to kill I'm killing off everything but I'm leaving you and everybody who you choose your family build this ark and here the, the specific instruction was not to just build it but seal it and pitch it This protected it and shut it in. God shut the door and not a soul could enter. There was no space and no gaps. No water got in there, no nothing. It was incessant. God decreed it, he spoke it, and that was it. Noah literally crossed over from one interval of time into a whole nother interval of time. The restart of humanity. That was greater grace. He entered into greater grace. So 
I want you to unmute your mics for a minute. I need to, <laughs> I need to hear a little bit of response. <laughs> y all, y all, are y'all following what I'm saying? Are y'all hearing yes. what God is saying? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So this is the year where you're going to experience God's greater grace. And I'm so excited about that because I don't know what you're expecting. Mm -hmm. But what I know is this is a space of greater grace. Oh, good. I'm expecting to get closer to God. That's what I'm expecting. To get closer to God, and you know me. So I just Amen. thank God for everything, you know. But that's what I'm expecting to get closer and wish I had done it earlier in life. Well, this is, you know what? There is no time in God's eyes. Right, right. My right. time is now. That's right. But, he's the redeemer yeah. of all mm -hmm. time. He's, re he's the redeemer of all time. The second. And, and that, that, that's the most incredible thing about what I'm saying is that the greater grace is about time, time and space because what you may have thought would take you forever, the grace of time and space will fulfill a thing in no time. Mm 